I'm Bianca, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Khadija, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Pollock, and I've been a chef for 10 years. French fries are great when you're binge watching Netflix with a friend. You have all of the ingredients you need to make it a great night. I like to use russet potatoes, like having crinkle cuts so I can have a little queso that's running through the ridges and everything. My recipe, the potatoes ferment for five days. They're double fried. It's served with an applesauce. I hate peeling potatoes. <laughs> We kind of want to get all of the skin off. Sometimes having the skin on potatoes gives a nice little crunchy texture, but I do not like it. And we'll cut it to make little stringy french fries. I'm going to cut them to about a half inch thick. Cut the rounded edges. No pressure to be perfect, right? We're going to put the potatoes in the water. All good. We're going to use red potatoes. These are usually sweeter, and they hold up a little bit better in the cooking process. Want the skin on, scrubbed, no dirt. We're going to put them on a mandolin. This thing's is dangerous. Do you see the blades? That's what you're looking for with the skin on. The first thing I want to do is I want to wash all the starch off. This will help them get nice and crispy and dump them in clean water. You want to make sure the water fully covers the potatoes. You want to salt the water because, oh wow, <laughs> it got stuck. <laughs> and then you also add the vinegar. And we're going to drain them. I'm going to shake, shake, shake. Okay, and add them to the pot. The next process is to make the brine, and it's a simple solution of just water and salt. Remember science class? Osmosis? That's what it is. It basically means the salt is carried to the inside of the potato until it's perfectly salted. So I'm feeling fancy today, so I'm gonna put some herbs and some parsley just for a little brightness and start our fermentation process. Mystery ingredient, cabbage leaves. These are gonna help the potatoes stay to the bottom and I'll see them a week later. Have a nice vacation. We're going to boil these fries and then we're going to fry them at 375 degrees. Then we're gonna freeze them and then we're going to refry them at 400 degrees. Now we're gonna add some canola oil, about one inch. This is the cold oil method. The oil slowly slowly rises up to temperature so you won't overcook your fries. Fry them for about 40 seconds. We're just doing this to agitate them just a little bit. Stay away from that pot. Okay. So the fries cook for about 15 minutes. Looking good. So I'm cooking some fries. Now we're going to season them with salt and pepper. Put this in the freezer so that whenever you're ready for fries, you take them out and pop them in for a final fry. I have a batch that I made five days ago that's ready to go. Check this out. It's not a sad fry. It's just fermented. The actual structure of the potato changes five days later. Shake out the excess water. It's really important to make sure that these fries are very dry. Curl the paper towel on itself. Give it a little squeeze. Our oil has come up to temperature. Stir it for a bit and then allow it to cook for about 30 more minutes. This method may take a little longer, but you only have to fry your fries once. The reason we fry our French fries two times, the first one is to blanch and what that does is to cook the fries from the inside and the second high temperature cook is just to get the fry extra crispy, double frying. Now we got the frozen fries. I'm going to put some of the fries on the spider. Oh! This oil is at 325 degrees. Set your timer for five minutes. Usually takes about three minutes. We do that cute little potato wee thing. It's been five minutes. First fry is done. This has made sure that the French fries are completely cooked in the center for the second fry. This oil is at 375 degrees. We're only gonna cook for one minute just to get that extra crispiness. I really love potatoes. So it's been about 45 minutes. These fries look ready to go. Mm. You know that they're done when they get a nice golden brown texture. As soon as fries come out of the fryer, just hit them with a little salt. I always feel like salt bay. You got the salt, right? You don't need a lot of salt, because we brine these fries and they're already salted from the inside out. I'm gonna get some chili lime seasoning, give them a nice little sprinkle. This is our first batch. I'm gonna fry up some more and then we're gonna move on to the sauce. We're gonna make a cheese sauce that I like to call Calypso Queso. I'm gonna add some butter, add your thyme leaves, onions. The french fries are pretty pickled from the fermentation process. So what we're making now is a curry applesauce. Carrot gives it a natural sweetness and a little bit of celery. I'm gonna put some cream cheese, some milk. The spices, starting with turmeric. This is an Indian spice, really good for you. Putting One in the garlic. garlic. 
And I'm also putting in some, some paprika. paprika for the seasoning. If you want it to brown a bit. A little bit of mustard powder, a pinch of red pepper, just to give it a little kick. A pinch of salt. salt. Even up the seasoning just a little bit. And some brown sugar, apple cider vinegar, just to bring out the flavors of the apple. Let this cook down until the apples get really, really soft, almost caramelized. It takes about 20 minutes. I love sour cream on my fries, but we're gonna kick it up a notch and add some hot sauce and lime. I love spicy food, so we're just gonna go crazy. Now we're gonna cut our lime, squeeze that in there. Okay, here's my sour cream with hot sauce and lime. You wanna make sure this cream cheese merges with the milk. As this is happening, take your Monterey Jack and your cheddar. Flour is gonna help make this sauce thicker. Add the cheese mixture in. The apples have been cooking for 20 minutes. We're just gonna take them off the heat and puree them with a high-speed blender. Oh, it's starting to thicken. What you wanna do is you wanna add some nutmeg, also add some allspice. And here is my calypso queso. This is our curry applesauce. It's gonna go great with our french fries. Perfect. So now let's get to our toppings. So we're gonna start off with our sour cream with hot sauce and lime. To be honest, you really can't have enough sour cream. Take our nice little calypso queso. Boom, that on top. Dip it, dip it, dip it, Yeah. And then add onion to the top. I have my curry applesauce and I'm gonna top them with some parsley. Voila. And now we'll add our cheese, we'll add our jalapenos, and last but not least, the tomatoes. And here are my nacho fries. And these are my french fries. These are my fermented french fries with curried applesauce. Okay, now we're ready to taste the magic. Oh, mm. Mm. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm proud. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really tangy. No, I know it's good because I'm dancing. <laughs> I'm gonna take another bite. I did this. I'm so happy right now. I'm just gonna keep on eating. These are crunchy, tangy on the inside, sweet. This is so good, I wouldn't change a thing. Actually, I think I'm gonna add sour cream to every one of my meals and hot sauce and lime. When's a good time to eat these fries? Every day. You just need a five day running start. I recommend eating this when you're sad. This thing is gonna make you happy. French fries come in all shapes, sizes, and textures. Let's look at how our chefs cut, fried, and top their fries. The most important attribute when choosing a potato for frying is the starch content. Bianca and Khadija chose russet potatoes, which have a high starch content. Pollock chose red skin potatoes, which have a lower starch content and higher sugar content, which could cause the potatoes to burn on the outside before they are completely cooked on the inside. While most fried foods are coated in a starch-based batter or breading, potatoes contain enough starch to produce a crispy fry on their own. When the potatoes are placed in hot frying oil, the starch absorbs water naturally present in the potatoes and the starch swells, creating a fluffy interior. The starch then forms cross links on the exterior of the fry, which enforces a brittle coating or crust around the fry, making it crispy. The high starch content of Bianca and Khadija's russet potatoes can create a crispier French fry and softer interior. I'm gonna use my russet potatoes because it's nice, it's tough. The cut can also optimize the crispiness and fluffiness of the final fry. Bianca hand cut her potatoes into fries that were about three eighths of an inch thick. Khadija cut her fries into a half inch thick crinkle cut shape and Pollock cut her fries into a shoestring style. By increasing the surface area with a thin cut like Pollock did or by adding grooves and ridges to the fry with a crinkle cut like Khadija did, the surface area is greater. Increased surface area can provide more exterior contact for the hot oil to brown the potato and form a crispy crust. all of our chefs approached their frying method differently. Bianca started frying in cold oil and heated the potatoes in oil simultaneously. Khadija parboiled, fried, froze, and then refried her french fries, and Pollock fermented and then double fried her french fries. You can smell a lot of funkiness in here. That's fermentation at work. With Bianca's slow heating method, she allowed the starch inside the fries to swell and become fluffy at a slower rate while also producing a crisp crust. This is a great method because you don't need an oil thermometer. As the oil begins to heat, 
The starch will swell, but the pectin, or the plant fiber, remains intact, which helps the fries keep their structure. If broken down, fries can become limp. Because the pectin is deactivated at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, the slow heating that Bianca employs can keep the pectin intact for longer, producing a crisp french fry. Khadija's cooking method began with parboiling. The vinegar that Khadija added to her water will also slow the breakdown of pectin, like Bianca did with her oil, maintaining the integrity of the fry when boiled. The pre-cooking also washes away some of the sugars that can cause the potatoes to burn during frying. Khadija's initial frying removed some of the residual moisture left on the potatoes after parboiling. Freezing the potatoes converted any leftover moisture into ice crystals, which evaporated as steam during the final frying stage, creating a very fluffy interior. Pollock fermented her potatoes for five days before double frying them. She soaked the potatoes in water with salt, herbs, and cabbage. In the oxygen depleted storage environment, the natural bacteria found in the potatoes convert sugar to lactic acid, creating an acidified potato. The fermentation process gave the fries a tangy flavor and delayed the breakdown of pectin, allowing the fries to hold up to the high heat of the oil. The salty brine that was used seasoned them thoroughly. After drying the fries well, Pollock then fried her potatoes twice. The first fry gelatinized the starch inside the potato, and the second fry created a crisp coating. Bianca fried her potatoes in canola oil, Khadija used safflower oil, and Pollock chose grapeseed oil. All of these oils are neutral flavored high smoke point oils. These oils will not add flavor to the potatoes during cooking, and can withstand the high temperatures required to deep fat fry without smoking or burning. Each chef chose a different flavor profile to add to their fries. Bianca made a lime crema, Khadija made a homemade queso cheese sauce, and Pollock made curried applesauce. The acidity in the lime crema that Bianca used will help to balance the fatty french fry flavor. The stark contrast in texture, a crunchy potato and a creamy sour cream will complement each other in the final dish. Khadija used a combination of herbs and spices, milk, and cheeses to make her queso sauce. The fattiness from the cheeses and the oil oil in the french fries will yield a very rich and heavy dish. Pollock made a curry spiced applesauce to serve alongside her fries. She cooked apples with carrots, celery, and spices before pureeing the mixture. The sweetness from the cooked apples and the combination of spices will complement the acidity and starchiness of the fermented potato fries. The golden color is from the turmeric and that's a consistency you're looking for. It serves like a ketchup. Sauces paired with fried foods like french fries should have a low water activity. Low water Water activity means moisture in the sauce is bound to large molecules. This binding prevents the water from passing from the sauce to the french fries. Khadija's queso sauce is high in fat and lower in water. It will not disrupt the integrity of the french fry crust. High water activity sauces can make the fries soggy, dampening the crust's structure. Bianca's lime crema has a fairly high water activity. To avoid sogginess, the loaded fries should be eaten right away. Pollock made a fruit-based sauce, which has a very high water activity. This type of sauce is better suited for dipping rather than pouring over top of a plate of fries. All of our chefs used some uncooked elements to top their fries, which have a fresh flavor in contrast to the fatty and starchy french fries. Bianca topped her fries with cheddar, tomatoes, and jalapenos. Khadija used red onions, and Pollock used fresh parsley and dill. Try some of these methods to get great french fries at home.